So I bought all the Bridgers so you don't have to. I have the 35, this grayish, greenish gray. I've got the 45, which is black, a 55 in blue, thanks to Huckberry, they had this for a while and then I picked it up from them. And then I've got this 65 liter in copper or orange. So you'd think that when you had four designs and you'd call it a Bridger, that you would have the exact same features just in a different form factor. Well, yes and no. So yes, that you, these all have some distinguishing characteristics to make them all Bridgers, but, there are certain things you could or could not do uh, as you modify the design. So we're gonna talk through some of those design features, couple head scratchers here and there. But again, we're gonna break them apart and see which one is gonna be best for you. To answer that question first off is normally the volume. So the volume is gonna normally determine which one of these backpacks is best for you. For instance, when I was climbing Mount Rainier, I was deciding really, really up until the last minute between the 55 liter and the 65 liter. Now there's a little bit of a sponge theory going on where if you get the 65 liter, you're gonna fill it up. If I had the 55 liter, had I gone that direction, I probably would have slimmed down the kit just so I could fit in the 55 liter and ultimately been in a better weight consideration. But anyway, well, I'm gonna do a future video on just what I packed out in the 65 liter for Mount Rainier. But right now I just wanted to, because I have all four, talk about the subtle differences between these four packs. So, I mean, I needed some wide angle cameras to really get all this stuff in here, but let's just talk about some of the distinguishing features that make them all bridgers. First of all, the same sort of pocket philosophy, these are top loading bags, so you, but you can access them. So there's some backpacks out there that really are just big open dump pouches with nothing, uh, no way to access things in the front. These all zip completely open from the front so you can get into the main compartment to get all your things. Now the three bridges I have here, 65, 55, and 45, are the most similar. The smallest, the day pack of the group, is probably the most different between these two, you know, besides just the volume difference. And really, so the main difference here between this one and the others is the bottom area. This is just one big compartment, not separate into two sort of compartments like we'll see here, but they all have the same harness system. So really that's kind of how we got into this, or at least I don't know how I got into this, is because I was gonna carry one of these packs up the mountain. I wanted to train with the same harness system because this one is very, very different. Now most backpacks, all of the backpacks that I've ever reviewed have a single sternum strap if they have a sternum strap at all. This one has two, so it fits across the chest, which is very, very unique. So that's one thing that makes these all the same. They all have the same harness system that makes them all very adjustable from the way this panel is designed, the way the frame is designed in there, the, again, two big pockets in the front, which we'll get to here in a little bit, are just all just, it just makes it awesome. To train, I didn't want to put miles on these, wear and tear, I loaded up the 45 pounder with a lot of weight. And in fact, I had sandbags in there up to about 55 pounds of weight and then carried sandbags on top. So anyway, this was the really put most of my training miles on this one, the 55 liter. Other than that, we all have top areas on all these. And again, these are very similar. This one's different. The brain area, which is removable on the three biggest ones is not removable on this one. So again, no bottom pockets, uh, separate area entrance to the bag. The brain is not removable, but still here, the brain's got a totally different design. It's pretty much a big pocket inside, like a lot of the other Mystery Ranch bags. Harness system, top pocket, you know, what makes them all bridgers? Very nice and accessible bottle pockets, big and stretchy. Now this one's a little smaller, but it's smaller because it's a smaller bag. And then compression straps. So really, and then the way to, you can attach gear. We've got the pockets in the front, which I've already mentioned, and the accessible zip pouches on 
the waist belt. So it is weight bearing and it is awesome. So there you go, Those, that's the 35 liter. Again, we'll come back to all these as we kind of go through this thing. Now, the other big difference between all of these is this front pocket that you have attached to the bags. So this 55 liters, which was the first one I got to and I really like the idea of because it's got a nice little um, buckle on the top and then a stretchy pocket that's open on top. So you can put a helmet in there. And that's really what I had to, thought I was gonna use this for is put the helmet as I went up the mountain. Ospreys and some others have the same sort of design. The 45 and the 55 liter has the same pocket. So big surprise to me when I got the 65 liter and it was different. So no stretchy pocket here, but it is a completely accessible front opening pocket. This front pocket, again, I need a bigger wider angle camera, the opens all the way up with the zippers. So super cool and different design than any of the other bags. So the 65 liter has this additional pocket, which has a stretch pocket on the inside and a zip pocket on the front. So you have a ton of access and storage in this front area. What's this pocket good for? Well, for me, it was crampons, it was gaiters. And then later on, when I was up on the mountain and I had uh, those gaiters and crampons on, this was the basically the gloves. So I had big, just different mitten and glove options in this bag and some other things uh, that I wanted secured. And I was gonna access this on the go. So there you go. That's the front and really the main difference between the 65, 55, 45, 35 is this zippered pocket. All right, so let's talk about a couple other features. And so this one is the 45 liter and it has the same feature set very similar to the two bigger ones, and then we'll point out some highlights. So again, the very front panel here, again, the 45 and the 55 have this same stretchy pocket. All of the bags have loop webbing on the side, so you can attach more gear. All of the bags have the same gear loop attachment, so you can put the ice axe through here, you can put your trekking poles, and then they have these elastic and clippable and adjustable little clips that are put into the webbing. So you can move these around uh, and there's two of them, one on each side. So that's a big plus. Now, before we dive into and break this thing apart, they all have a very similar compression system. The two smaller, 35, 45, have single straps. So that's the 45. You can see on the 35, same thing just got single, there's two of them, but they're just single attachment points. What's the difference? Well, as we get out the 55 and the 65 liter, you can see that it's sort of, it's a V shape. So they're attached twice in the back, single point in the front, but we have two of them. So top and bottom on each side. So another minor difference. Again, bottle pockets, nice, stretchy, huge. You can use them for bottles like I have on these, or you can put them, use them for your trekking poles where you put the, handles in here and then attached with the compression straps the top of them that's a little better way than i had them attached onto the 55 liter bottom of the bag and this is where we talk about accessing your segmented bottom of the bag that you would have for a sleeping bag now i don't have a sleeping bag in this one i have it in the 65 liter but again the bottom of these bags is all very very similar where you have an attachment buckle so you can put additional bedroll in the bottom Everything's got strap keepers. So these little strap um, keepers are Velcro type and they totally um, cinch up the remaining strap as you roll it up. So you got those two there. And again, this bottom section has a single buckle that opens up sort of like a bow tie. And then the zipper goes all, all the way across. Now, the advantage to having something like this is it basically helps you with the stress on the zipper so it doesn't fail over time. Now, all of these inside have additional little straps to, after you put a big load in there, you can cinch it down before you zip it and then close it up. So again, sleeping bag in this one. Now at 45 liters, you're really gonna be in an overnight mode. Probably a tent or some other things put into this one. So that's that. So that's the, and they all have a divided section. They all have a layer in there with buckles that 
segment this lower sleeping bag section from the upper part of the bag. So you don't infringe on that part of the bag. You just keep your sleeping bag stuff in there. And if you were to take it out, not all the stuff's gonna slam down. Now they're all removable uh, with just buckles and that flap sort of goes away so that you can use this whole bag if you didn't wanna go that route. Now for me, when I went up to Mount Rainier, I intended to put my sleeping bag on the bottom of it, but because as you're climbing up, you put the bag on the snow and you sit on it, they recommended that we don't do it that way. And then we actually line the whole bag with a trash liner. I actually had something else, a Cita Summit bag that I lined the whole inside of the bag and then shoved all my things inside just so I had another layer of moisture protection to keep everything dry. So that's what I did. Now on game day, I did it differently and I actually had my wet layers in here. So I had my hard shell jacket and pants in the bottom compartment segmented from the rest, a bunch of puffies on top. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself to another video where I talk about the Mount Rainier packing list. That's the lower section. Again, all of the 65, 55 and 45 liters have that compartment. The 35 liter is just all one big compartment. We still have the buckles on the bottom. So if you wanted to attach something to the bottom of the bag, you could. All right, so that's the sides, the bottom and the front, generally speaking. The back now is very adjustable. The harness system on this thing is awesome. And again, you remove a plate from the back and this whole upper part of the bag adjusts up and down to suit your needs. It really takes a while to dial this thing in uh, and it is very, very specific to what you have loaded into it. So definitely take some time and size this right for you. One thing that I haven't mentioned is all these bags are the same small, medium size for me. Just get my torso height, I'm 5'9", my torso is about 19 inches tall. So I went with the size that fit me appropriately. There's a large, extra large size, which is just more of the harness, nothing about the bag's capacity. Totally breathable and totally padded, comfortable and identical to all of them is this hip belt. It's a little bit bigger in the 6555 liter. I only know because these pockets fit my Max iPhone in that bigger sizes, but not on the two smaller sizes. Anyway, what I love about this design is this back panel is totally breathable around and it sort of separates the bag from the harness and it lets you sort of float. So it does a nice job of keeping the weight attached to you, but at the same time, letting it move independently of your body as you climb or hike. So it's super cool. The handle on all these is identical. It's a very, it's just sewn over webbing, but it's very, very adequate because you're gonna grab this bag by this handle, not the shoulder straps as you put it on. That's sort of the pro level of moving, uh, getting the bag on and off is that. Load lifters. So, you know, what's tough about all these packs is the adjustments really go with what's loaded in the bag. So from heavy to lightweight, you just gotta totally adjust the bag from, first of all, I'm not gonna go into a totally in-depth, but you start with the hip belt attachment, then shoulders and then load lifters to keep this thing attached to your body. But what I did wanna show you in this instance is this harness system because this is the black one and it looks contrasting with the gray shirt. We have this, harness system. Now what's awesome about this harness system is it definitely deflects a lot of the weight from a traditional backpack setup. So, and at first I really wasn't sure how I would like it, but I really do like it because it just makes this sort of kind of go away. It feels like you're sort of wearing a jacket with a backpack attached to it. And so I definitely like that. The additional thing that I love are these two pockets. Now these pockets are super big big enough for your iPhone Max, if that's the way we're gonna roll. Some other pro tip things that I also used on the mountain is an action camera. So this is the Insta360 Go 3. Did a video of this one, it's linked over here. But the fact that I could put this in the pocket and work and go uh, and just whip this thing out and take some video and then put it up there without having to dig into pockets, unzip things and go that route. I didn't really use my phone too much, mostly because I didn't want to lose it. That's just me. Now the other side, and I had one of these with me, this is a collapsible water bottle because it's just super to drink out of on the go. And this is of course empty, so it's hard to jam in there. But when it's full, it's easy to put in here and it's just right here. So I could, drink on the go. It's closer to my body, tougher to freeze just because it's right here. 
versus a hydration bladder up on a mountain, that tube is probably gonna freeze as you go upper to the upper mountain and things get really cold. So I definitely liked this setup for that reason. Another thing that I figured out later is that you can walk around with this camera in this way, cinch the little buckle down so that you don't lose it. And then you can let this thing roll. So you can record some footage as you're climbing with this camera exposed and it's really just here. So as long as you have a handle in this pocket, that's how I would roll. I figured it out too late. Got some great footage of climbing on the way down, but not a lot going up because I didn't think about it until it's too late. But anyway, those are some pro tips that you can use these pockets for on the Bridger series. So that's the harness system, load lifters, everything's totally, you can customize this thing, make it yours. And again, it took me a while to figure it out, but dude, it's so awesome when it's totally dialed in. Kind of forget about it after a while. All right, so back to the bag. Again, very, some, these are just similarities, right? Things that are similar about all the bags. Even this 35 liter bag, the one that's kind of different, has the same strap system on the front. Now these, the buckle for the top part of the bag, the brain are on two straps that are actually attached down here, which just make this another way to carry some bigger items, maybe another layer of jacket. You could put uh, just some bigger stuff across the bag, some rope maybe, to keep it secured. And then the brain sort of opens up from that point. Again, all of these, on the 65, 55, and 45, detach. So the brain detaches and you can use it as a waste pack, maybe for a summit day to bring some snacks if you didn't need to carry the rest of the stuff. But that's just one way you can use this thing. Now, digging into the brain, they all open up on the three biggest sizes, identical, and they open up. She'll stop. So all the brains have the same general setup with a big open flap and then a zip pocket on the upper outer lid and that's pretty much it. So what do you use these things for? I use them for mostly snacks, quick on the go things, maybe some first aid stuff and then later on the upper mountain um, I had another light, light pair of gloves and some other things but mostly food, mostly food in the top because I wanted a quick and easy access to this. Now they all again all open up very similar the compression straps all attach to the front flap. So you kind of have to undo those from these buckles to free up the front flap. Now they all have a little buckle system at the front and the top to undo this section. Boom, just have some uh, puffy blanket in there and some other gear packed in here. Now. Nothing else admin wise in the front of that panel. We got some packing cubes just to show you what's in here. Now the benefit of having a two compartment setup is that your sleeping bag's not gonna impede on what's up above and what's up above is not gonna impede on the sleeping bag. So I don't have a sleeping bag in here, just a big huge packing cube. But this is where we can see the flap that is attached with these buckles. It was normally in there and this divider just keeps things segmented. So we also have a hydration bladder. If you're not in some place freezing, way to hang that bladder and then a way to get it to the front of the bag. So that's it. The, up, the top part of the bag opens up with this little buckle. And again, all of them are very similar. Draw string at the front and we have this opened up completely. Now we also have these stretch pockets on the side. And this size, maybe a camp chair would fit in there. So we dive into the 65 liter. We can see it fits a tent, a camp mat, those kind of things are all in here. But basically that's the same insides from the 55, 65, and 45 all have the same interior, general layout. Of course, it's just bigger, more capacity for more things, but that's how it all packs out. that's the 45. This 65 liter, again, I've already hit on most of what I want to talk about. Crampons for the going up most of the mountain and then for a summit day, it ended up being my glove attachment. Same thing down here. I actually have the sleeping bag in this one and it was just super comfy to sit on uh, because even when I used it in the total bag mode, everything, the sleeping bag was all at the bottom because I was gonna sit on this part of the bag. Again, V straps on the two bigger sides, sizes, but as I dive into this thing, we're gonna see 
just, you know, the capacity of this thing is just immense. That's 65 liters. And so as we dive in and we see what's going on on the inside, again, mostly just layers packed in here, but I did have, which is I really wanted to show you here, on these bigger pockets on the outside, I actually had a two-person tent jammed into these side pockets, which is super nice. And I have a, a bear vault on that side, and, a, and this is my camp mat, Nemo camp mat, on this side. So it's just a nice, easy way to keep things segmented. If you didn't want to put water on the outside, like on Summit Day, I actually had a water bottle on the inside of each of those. So that A, they wouldn't freeze, and B, they wouldn't become projectiles going down the mountain. So that's just it. That's just the, generally speaking, the, the big differences uh, and similarities between the th three biggest. Now, the one that's sort of odd, so we'll talk a little bit specifically about the 35 liter, which in this ballpark is a very, just a bigger day pack. 35 liters, not super huge, but still plenty big. Has the same harness system, so you could use this as a training bag, or you could have the same weight load bearing capacity because of the way the straps are designed and the hip belt. So this is super comfortable. I'm gonna use this thing uh, for sure in day pack mode. Now, like I said earlier, the, the brain is not removable, but you get an open pocket and the ability to get into the brain to put some stuff in there and use it for snacks on the go. But you just can't remove it. You wouldn't because you're not probably staying the night in this one unless you were really an ultralight person, maybe out under the stars. Now, same design here, these straps. Again, no way to get into this bottom compartment, but you do have the compression straps to put something on the bottom. Maybe a tripod for the day. Water bottle pockets, all the same as the other bags we've seen. Same opening style like we have on the other bags, so it's super nice. And inside, you know, the same kind of thing. So if we just, it's one big open bag in the bottom. You still get the two side bottle pockets on the 35 liter. But again, it's got a frame, it's totally adjustable, retains all of the awesome feel and wearability of the bigger bags, just in a smaller size. So it's really a great day, maybe overnight, a little super light overnight, but anyway. One thing I didn't talk about really is the build quality of this. 100D Robic on most of this and then a 330 in other places. So 330 and then the high use areas and a 100 layer, 100D material everywhere else. So it's super, super light. So here are some final thoughts on the Mystery Ranch Bridger series. And I totally love all four of these bags for what they do and what they've provided. Again, it used the 45 liter in training mode to go on the upper mountain and I couldn't decide between the 55 and 65 liter. Ultimately went with the 65 liter. Could have probably done the whole thing with this 55 liter in a great blue color as well. Right now I'm gonna put up in this corner down here, I'm gonna put up a little spreadsheet so you can kind of see what I'm looking at in terms of, you know, when I was looking at these, you know, I just wanted to compare them you know, line them all up together. So we can see here the dimensions on all three in the upper limits. I've kind of highlighted a few things. You can see that the depth of the 65 liters really what gives that sucker its ultimate size. The height of the 55 and 65s are really similar, only an inch different, and there's an inch of width, but most of that comes in the depth in terms of getting the more volume out of the 65 liter. You can see the pounds, you know, when you're getting up here, anywhere from three and a half, 3.7 pounds up to five and a half for the biggest bag. Um, the lids, again, they're all removable except for the 35. It's a fixed lid, so just think about that. The smallest one also doesn't have that separate sleeping bag compartment or the opening at the bottom. The other stretch exterior pocket, again, it's only on the middle two, the 45 and the 55. And again, a totally different pe pocket setup on the 65 which I preferred going up the mountain just because I could lock things in there completely and have them protected for the upper mountain where I had gloves in there for summit day. And then cost. So not a wide range of cost difference. You still have most of the awesomeness in terms of harness and frame and side bottle pockets and everything from the 35 to the 55 liter. Not, you know, they're pretty much in the same ballpark as any other 65 liter backpack, I would say in that $375 range. Yes, you can go more and yes, you can go light. You can also go lighter at five and a half pounds. It's on the heavier side, but you get what you paid for in terms of materials and just comfort in the harness system. To me, it was worth it and I totally loved it. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the Bridger line. If you got any questions, 
that I didn't answer here. Again, I'm not a backpacking expert. I'm a backpack pseudo expert. So I have had some experience with these bags in the outdoors. And so I can add a little bit of comment to it. So if you have any other questions I didn't answer here, leave me a comment down below and I'll happily answer that. I got another video coming out. I'm gonna take that 65 liter. I'm gonna jam it full of stuff that I used on Mount Rainier. And then we're gonna talk through all those things, things I learned that you might want. So if you wanna see that video, definitely give this video thumbs up so other people can see it subscribe and sign up for alerts when i post that video probably in the next couple weeks because since i have all these out i'm gonna pack them all up and we're gonna film a video about what i took out mount rainier so there you go with that i'm gonna go outside enjoy some of this great weather we're having it's cooled off a little bit today not gonna last but anyway get outside while you can because everything's better outside see you in the next video So and I've decided that nobody's gonna know the difference between you and me from this angle, so. I'm recording your best side. Here we go. Woo! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, why'd you guys stop? Oh. <laughs> oh, my shoe, thank you. One, two, three, test. Is the audio working? What's going on with this thing? Okay. Keep tracking me, 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 keep tracking me. Just I have to remain like looking at it. So that's good to get. Series, everything from the 65 to the These are backpacking backpacks. Blah 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 black 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 blacks. Keep the wrong thing. Don't look at that, look at that. But I used the 65 and it did fantastic. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I got more reviews coming out. They're not all backpacking focused. I do a range of things from travel, EDC, you name it. A couple cameras thrown in here and there, but mostly gear to get you outside. See you outside. We're gonna continue putting on some more miles in this thing, trying to work out some little issues with the sizing. It takes a while to dial it in, so definitely give yourself some time to dial in the settings. <laughs>